Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Aditya and, and on this channel, I teach about Kubernetes, blockchain and software engineering in general. So in today's video, we are going to take a look how we can do the Kubernetes cluster migration from cluster one to another cluster. So for this example, I have created two clusters. So my first cluster is on DigitalOcean and the second cluster is on the Azure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to migrate my DigitalOcean workload to the Azure cluster. So if we move to the terminal, you can see I have two windows open here. And in the first window, if I do cube cuttle get node, if I do cube cuttle get nodes, here you should see some nodes. And these is my DigitalOcean uh, Kubernetes cluster. So here you can see that I have three nodes. And on the right side here, I have a Kubernetes cluster that is running on Azure. So if I do cube cuttle get nodes, here you should see two nodes. These are AKS node, which is Azure Kubernetes service. And right now this is running on version 1.21.9. Now what I'm going to do for this demonstration, I have already created some YAML files and these YAML files are for the MinIO server. So we are going to set up a MinIO server and there we will put some files onto that MinIO server. And then we are going to migrate that uh, entire cluster to the Azure Kubernetes cluster. And we already know that MinIO is a stateful application, which means it has some data associated to it. And that data is also going to be get migrated from cluster uh, in DigitalOcean to the cluster in, in Azure. So uh, I have already created some YAML files. If I do LS here, you can see I have three YAML files. So first is for the persistent volume claim. Then the second YAML is for the application, which itself is a deployment, MinIO deployment. And the third YAML is the service YAML, so which is I have exposed this uh, deployment, MinIO deployment, using a cluster IP service. So let's quickly uh, deploy all these application, all these YAML files. So I'm going to do kubectl apply hyphen f. And before that, let's do one thing. Let's quickly create a namespace first. Uh, I'm going to create a namespace uh, that is MinIO. And inside this namespace, I'm going to keep all of my MinIO workload. So namespace got created successfully. Now let's uh, apply those YAML files, these one. Yeah, so this is deployed completely. Uh, we have deployed the YAML files. And if I do kubectl get pods in MinIO namespace, we should see it is in creation phase. But give, let's give it a, some time so that it is created successfully. And now let me do the port forwarding as well. So I'm going to port forward this service, which is MinIO service to 9091 here yeah so it is up now let's try to open this in the browser so here you can see our minaya application is up and running and now let's quickly create some data into it so that we are actually going to see how we can move our stateful deployment uh, within the clusters so let me create one bucket here let me give it a name as test so our bucket got created and now i can simply upload one file here so i uploaded one file here as well now let me quickly create one more bucket i will call it as home and inside this bucket let's create one folder here and i'm going to call it as home one let's say and here let's upload one another file and here oh, i have uploaded one another file uh, this is a json file so now we have two buckets here the first bucket is the home and inside this bucket we can see we have one folder which is home one and inside that we have one file uh, have one json file so if we take a look on the second bucket as well which is test bucket so here also we can see we have one file 
and now we are going to migrate this entire data from DigitalOcean cluster to the Azure cluster with the help of Velero. So Velero is a tool which helps us in taking up the backup of the cluster and then we can restore that backup into some other cluster or maybe within the same cluster. So before creating a backup, first we have to install the Velero in our Kubernetes cluster. And in one of my older video, I have explained you how to do the Velero installation, both the client installation as well as the server side installation. So I would recommend you to check that out. So now let's quickly move to the terminal. And here, let me just close this service. And now let's simply install the Velero in our DigitalOcean cluster. And here you can see uh, we are passing some couple of flags. So we are using, uh, we, we are passing use volume snapshot as false because I don't want to use my uh, DigitalOcean storage or so to say my volumes that are specific to the cluster. And here also you can see one under flag which is use restic. So I'm going to use the restic based approach in order to back up the cluster using the restic plugin. And also here you can see I'm passing the provider as AWS. So I want to store my backup in AWS S3 bucket so that uh, I can use that bucket as my storage location and then I can bind it between my clusters. But before that, before installing that, first let me export some variables here. So I have to export my bucket name and as well as the region on which this bucket is created. And I've already created up this bucket. So if I go to browser and then go to my S3 console, here you can see this is the bucket which is already created. And now let me just simply install the well arrow. So here you can see I am passing the bucket name as the environment variable. Then I'm passing the region and also I'm passing my AWS credential file. So you have to pass your credential file. You have to provide the access key and the access secret as well. So let me hit enter. Okay. I think we are in the wrong directory. So let me provide the path to it. Let me just move out of it. So this file is not present. Yeah. Let's now run this because this file is present inside my root directory. This one. So now it is installing the Velero. So the Velero is installed. Now we can try to get the backups that, that are currently available with Velero. So I can do Velero backup and then get. So right now it is showing that we don't have any backup here. So now let's try to create a backup of our namespace our Minio namespace and then we are going to migrate that namespace from uh, Azure Ocean cluster to Azure cluster. So first let me just quickly create up a backup of that. So Velero backup create and here you have to provide the namespace name for which you want to give the backup and then you have to give the backup name as well. Let's run this command. So meanwhile, this is creating, the backup is creating. Let's go to our Azure cluster and quickly install the Velero there because we need the Velero present on both the nodes in order to do the restoration and backup as well. So let me, uh, let me, let me clear up this first. And now let's export the same environment variables and we can now run the Velero installation command. Velero install. So this is going to install the Velero in our Azure cluster. So it looks like the backup is complete on the digital ocean. And now we can run that Velero backup get command in order to see if we have the backup or not. Yeah, so here we can see we got the backup and the backup name is Minio and the state is completed. So now we are ready to migrate this entire namespace to our Azure cluster. So before doing that, first we have to make sure that the storage class is available on the Azure cluster as well. So let's go and check the storage class that are available here. So this is going to list all the storage classes. So this is the store default storage class in Azure cluster. 
and if we do cube CPL get SC on my distribution cluster then here the storage class name is DO block storage now the problem here is that we don't have any storage class with name DO block storage in the Azure cluster and when we are actually doing the restoration process at that time it is going to fail why because we don't have any such class that is present inside this uh, Azure cluster. So first we have to create one class uh, with name DO block storage and then we can do the actual migration. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this default storage class as the reference and then create a new storage class with name DO block storage. So what I'll do here, let me just clear up this first and I will do cube cutter get SC and then I'm going to get the output basically the yaml of that default storage you can see here this is the yaml and i can simply store this response in one of the yaml file so i'm going to store this response into azure sc.yaml file that is done and now i can just open this file and just rename the stuff so let me delete some of the stuff so this part I don't need manager field is what I don't need so this part is not required okay this is also not required but anyway let's keep it I think we don't need this as well And here we don't need this as well this is also not required and here first and here all we have to do is we have to just simply change the name from default to do block storage so let me do that this is going to be do do block storage and let's save this file So now simply let's apply this file yes so the storage class got created and now we can do the restoration here so in order to restore the backup we have to run one command which is velero restore create and from backup so here you have to give the name of your backup that we passed when we create the backup and let's run this so it is going to take some time to do the restoration process and meanwhile let me clear up this site and let's do the port forwarding here So the min IO that is running on digital ocean is running on port 9091. So the restoration is complete. Let me just clear up this and let me do the port forwarding here. And here I'm going to use some different port, which is 9092. Let's hit enter. Yes, so it has started. Now we can go to browser. And here, let me just simply go to localhost 9092. Let's see. Yeah, so now we are in the localhost 9092. And you can see we have two buckets. First is the home bucket. And inside that, we have one folder, which is home. And here we have the file, the same file that we uploaded in the DigitalOcean cluster. If we go to the test bucket, here we can see that we have one another file which is architecture.draw.io and this is the same file that we uploaded in the DigitalOcean cluster. So which means our migration was successful. We were able to migrate the data from cluster that is in DigitalOcean to the cluster that is in Azure. And let's uh, go to the second tab. 
so this is minio which is running on 9091 and here and this is the one which is running on actually on digital ocean and you can see we have the same files here as well you can see we have two buckets and inside that we have the same files that are present in the uh, in the azure cluster so which means that the migration is successful so you can explore more about the well arrow uh, from the official logs and there they have guide as well for the cluster migration so you can refer this guide as well and you can refer the bunch of options that are available in the, the available with the well arrow so also if i have to show you the my s3 bucket as well so this was my bucket this was my s3 bucket and let me just refresh it so here you can see we have one folder which is backups and inside this we have the another folder with name min.io which is actually the name of my backup and inside this we have a couple of files that actually contain the data and the definition of you know pods deployment services all those stuff and this is my azure cluster which is running with two nodes so this was pretty much it for this video hope you like this video and if you did like this video then please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one